hey guys welcome back to another video i hope everyone is doing well i see we have some new subscribers so thank you very much for subscribing to my channel i hope you like my content i hope you like it here i'm a student midwife and i also crochet so do check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't already so today we are talking about working part-time while studying full-time now as a student midwife we all know that we don't get paid for the placement that we do so we do work 12 hour shifts sometimes 45 hours 48 hours a week and we aren't getting paid so some of us do lean towards getting a part-time job you do have other options such as student finance or the learning support fund but if that's not enough to sustain you then like me you will do a part-time job currently i'm working as a program coordinator for a charity and this was actually the job that i was doing before i decided to come to university so i was working there full-time i had a full-time job and they let me go part-time so i can focus on my studies i'm coming to the end of my first year now and on reflection it's been really good to have this job it's been good to have something sort of outside of midwifery outside of healthcare to develop other skills that I've been working on and to have working relationships as well. So it's been really good to have this job. It is a work from home job. I do 15 hours a week. I can do them whenever I like. It's very flexible. But I will say that when I'm on placement, it's very hard to maintain those hours because it is a desk job and you have to do those hours. You have to engage. Um, and on placement, I don't know about you guys, I have very low energy. <laughs> so for me, it's been a bit of a struggle to keep up with placement and working and you know all of that at the same time because of that i have actually decided to leave my part-time job it was too many hours in the week it was not sustainable and i just realized that i had to something had to give i've been there for three years guys so it's very hard it's very sad but you know we got to do what we got to do uni is the priority it doesn't mean that i'm not going to be earning any more money i'm still going to be working part-time i'm going to explain to you guys what i'm doing next for healthcare students a really good way to earn money is through your staff bank so what the staff bank is is essentially agency work temporary working at the trust that you're working at it's available to all staff to be able to pick up extra shifts and earn some more money on top of their hours and as students working at these trusts we are able to sign up to the staff bank as well and pick up extra shifts and earn some money that way it doesn't just have to be at your trust that you're doing the placement at you can do it at your local hospital as well so that's what i'm moving on to i'm going to be working as a maternity care assistant at my local hospital the good thing about this is that there are tons of different roles available to you and you could be a maternity care assistant you can be a healthcare assistant there are administrative roles so there's a lot available on the staff bank as students, we can get paid on band two of the NHS pay scale and the hourly rate varies on your local trust and on the trust that you will choose to work at. One of the great things about this is that there's no pressure to fulfill a certain amount of hours each week. You do choose to work when and as you please. You book shifts by yourself. So whenever you want to do work, you book it. And if you don't want to do work, let's say for a week, you don't want to work, you've got exams coming up, then you don't have to. So that's really good in terms of flexibility. Doing these clinical roles will also enable you to grow your confidence and your skills in these clinical areas. So working as a maternity care assistant or a healthcare assistant you're going to be working in clinical areas and you're going to be developing these skills it will grow your confidence it will grow your skills as well which is obviously good ultimately for the degree that you're in i mean we do placements we're shadowing our nurses or our midwives and we're doing 12 hour shifts for free we might as well join the staff bank and get paid to do it so it just burns a little bit less you get what i'm saying so to join the staff bank is pretty easy just locate the email of whoever is running the staff bank or the general staff bank email send them an email and say i'm in first year second year whatever year you're in and i would love to join the staff bank i believe you have to send them your cv as well so you can add on your cv the clinical roles that you've been doing as a student and your experience um make sure you tell them what you've been doing so that they accept you onto it as well and depending on the procedures of your local trust or the trust that you apply to 
then they will take it from there you might not have to do an interview you might just get accepted straight away or you might have to do an interview just to expand further on you know your skills and everything else so i'm still working as a program coordinator and i'll be doing so until the end of my notice period but i will also be starting at the staff bank at my local hospital so i will do an update video to let you guys know how i found it maybe in a few months um while i'm solely doing that job and not both of them so in this video i've spoken about what i do for work what i'm transitioning to for work benefits of joining the staff bank and how to join the staff bank I hope this video has been helpful. If there's anything I haven't covered that you want to know, ask me in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer. Follow me on my socials. I will put them here on my TikTok, on my Instagram to see more of what I get up to. That's all from me. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.